Um, the next chapter is called Isabella. Mrs. Frisbee spelled it out slowly. The plan of the rats of Nim. What or where was Nim? The name had a strange and faraway sound. Had these rats then come here from somewhere else? Did that explain why they had books and electric lights and wires and an electric motor? Yet they had been here, or at least there had been rats here for as long as she could remember. Still, that was not so very long. She wondered what other things they had. Suddenly, she had an almost overwhelming desire to look around, to see what was behind the other doors and down the other corridors. She went to the door, opened it, and looked out into the hall. It was entirely deserted and silent, except for that when she listened carefully, she could hear the faint humming in the distance, as if something were running. Another motor? She started out into the hall, but changed, then changed her mind. Better not. Nicodemus had been friendly. They had all been friendly, but explicit. He had said she was to wait in the library, and she was not there to pry, but to get help. So she went back into the library, closed the door, and sat on one of the benches. The books on the table were mostly paperbacks, small enough so the rats could handle them easily, but too big for her. So she sat in front of the blackboard and looked at it again. Beneath the title, across the top, in neatly chalked handwriting, were columns of words and figures. Schedule. January, group 1, 10, oats. 30 loads equals 2, BU. Group 2, 10, wheat. 30 loads equals 2, BU. Group 3, 10, corn. 20 loads equals 1 and a half BU. Group 4, 10, miss seeds. Est, 10 loads total. The rest of the blackboard was filled with more rows of figures, each headed by the name of a month, February, March, April, May, and so on until the end of July. At the bottom of a separate square was ruled off. Plows, Arthur's group, 14. Plow number two, complete January 1. Plow number three, complete February 10. Plow number four, complete March 20. Mrs. Frisbee stared at all of this, trying to make head or tail of it, but she could not. It was quite incomprehensible. She was still puzzling over it when the door opened and the rat came in. It was a girl rat, small and quite young, judging by her looks. She was carrying a pencil and some papers and looking at the papers as she walked, so that she did not see Mrs. Frisbee at first. When she did, she gasped and dropped the papers, scattering them on the floor. Her eyes opened wide. Who are you? She asked. I don't know you. How did you get in? She backed towards the door. It's all right, said Mrs. Frisbee. I'm a friend of Mr. Ages. The rat was very young indeed. Only a child. But why are you in here? Who let you in? Nicodemus, he told me to wait here. The rat, girl rat looked doubtful. You might be a spy. A spy? How could I be a spy from where? I don't know. From outside. Maybe from Nim. I don't even know what Nim is. That's what you say. But I don't, what is it? Asked Mrs. Frisbee, feeling slightly annoyed. It's a place, the girl rat, her alarm apparently subsiding, began picking up her scattered papers. I'm supposed to be practicing my reading. What kind of place? It's where we came from. I don't know too much about it. I've never been there. How can you come from there if you've never been there? My father and mother did. I was born afterwards. I think it's white. Anyway, I know one thing. We don't want to go back we don't want to get caught. So Mrs. Frisbee thought the sound of it, whatever Nim was, the rats had escaped from it to come here. But she realized she was not likely to get very clear information from such a child. Again, she hoped Nicodemus would explain it. Did Nicodemus come from Nim too? Yes. Justin? Yes. You know Justin? Yes. I suppose you're not a spy, said the girl rat. She sounded mildly disappointed. Then she added irreverently, Justin's not married. She climbed on one of the benches and opened a book. He's the best one of all. He's not even afraid of dragon. She read in the book for perhaps 30 seconds, picked up her pencil, and then put it down again. I'm too young to get married. I suppose so, said Mrs. Frisbee, for a while yet. But that won't last long. That's what my mother says, but it seems long, and Justin might. 
he's not even afraid of dragon. She read in the book for perhaps 30 seconds, picked up her pencil, and then put it down again. I'm too young to get married. I suppose so, said Mrs. Frisbee, for a while yet. That won't last long. That's what my mother says, but it seems long, and Justin might marry somebody else. Maybe not, said Mrs. Frisbee, who could see beyond the tip of her nose. He's pretty young himself yet. What's your name? Isabella. It's a pretty name. It's all right. Only my brother calls me Izzy. I don't like that. I don't wonder. Where's your brother? At the meeting. He's older. All the men are at the meeting, but my mother didn't go. The mothers don't always go. She's in the grain room, packing grain. Packing grain for the plan. She doesn't like the plan, though. The plan again. What is the plan? Why doesn't she like it? It's just the plan for where we're going to live and all that. She doesn't like it because she says it's too hard. No more electric lights, no more refrigerator, no more running water. But she isn't deserting it or anything. Not like Jenner. We didn't like Jenner. Who's Jenner? He was in the group, but he quit. He went back to Nim. We don't know. Mrs. Frisbee was gradually getting a picture of life in the rat colony. A somewhat confusing one because Isabella was a child, but nonetheless, certain things were apparent. They had a grain room, presumably for food storage. The females sometimes went to meetings and sometimes did not. Nicodemus seemed to be the leader. They had a plan for the future that some rats did not like, and one named Jenner had deserted. Were the others gone with him? She was about to ask Isabella when the library opened and Nicodemus, Justin, and Mr. Ages entered. Another rat came with them, a stranger.